This is Andy Gutierrez from StarWars.com, and you are listening to Coffee with Kenobi with Dan Z. This is the podcast you're looking for. This is James Arnold Taylor, and you're listening to Coffee with Kenobi. Hmm, I have a good feeling about this. Well, hello, my friends, and welcome back to CWK Live every Monday night at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. I'm your host, Dan Z. Thrilled to be talking Star Wars with each and every one of you. Well, as you know, last week I thought we were going to have to do the show on Tuesday, but there was a bit of a scheduling change. So here we are, Monday at our usual time, 7 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. Again, I'm your host, Dan Z. This is cool, man. It's going to be a fun night tonight. It's good to see our friends back with us. We've got Minta here with us. This is the way it's CWK Day. I like your Facebook profile picture, Minta. That's very fun. Mason is here piloting Mrs. Ayer's Facebook lot Facebook. He says, hello. Hello, Mason. Mason helped me a lot with our Facebook, uh, with our list tonight. So that's going to be fun. Mary says, happy Monday, everyone. Mary is actually not in Disney World. She's, I'm assuming you're back home. So good to see you, Mary. Terry, hello, my friend. Terry's going to be uh, the CWK Alliance Spotlight member uh, in a couple of weeks. We're excited about that. Blake is here. Hello. Hey, hey, peeps. Liberty says, hello. Liberty, great to have you, man. So nice to have you on the show. Monday's Brian says, this is the Monday you are looking for. Exactly. So yeah, Brian is able to join us tonight as well. Very good. Well, tonight we're going to have a couple of things we're going to do. We're going to do top five moments from Star Wars Visions Lop and Ocho, of course. We're going to figure out some CWK live future topics, and I've got a, a bit of a surprise to show that I got a little bit ago in the mail. Matthew says, Happy Monday. Love the Christmas TikTok video, Dan. Well, thank you, Matt. I appreciate that, buddy. Uh, we just uploaded another one a little bit ago, and you know what? I, I mocked TikTok for a very, very long time. And here I am, you know, making TikTok videos. So uh, you probably can't tell, but I've got a couple of some more Christmas lights over here. Uh, I got a lot of added to the studio. Every time I see that intro for Facebook Live, I think, why am I not making a video for the beginning of this thing? Because my studio now looks a lot different than that video, for sure. Uh, Matt also has a TikTok for Disney Marvels. And be sure to follow that one, as well as Coffee with Kenobi on TikTok. Still can't believe I ever uh, would say that since, but here we are. All right, so thanks everybody for the, I guess we're not going to say pre-order anymore. We've got the, um, the Star Wars Character Encyclopedia is out at the end of the show. I'll take any questions you have uh, about it. Uh, happy to talk about it. It's, I love seeing people post pictures of them getting their book. It is very, very thrilling to me. Terry says, that Yoda, right? I know that Yoda is pretty cool. I really like it. Mary says, some of us have gone kicking and screaming over to TikTok. I know, you're welcome. <laughs> Anthony, hello, Anthony. Anthony's uh, killing it on social media for his podcast, Force Ghost Conversations, which is great. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at what is brewing in the world of Star Wars this week. All right, so what's brewing this week? Uh, we finally got some information on, on Disneyland After Dark. As many of you know, Disneyland After Dark was going to have a Star Wars event after a celebration, when the celebration was going to be in 2020. And then, of course, celebration was canceled, along with so many other things. And then we didn't know. Now, today we find out that you can reschedule, and it's going to be on the 27th of May. Now, the big... The big news with that, however, uh, is that, well, there's a lot of things that are big news with it, but basically the podcast meetup was going to be on the 27th. We're moving that back to the 26th, and we have updated the website. We were promoting the new change on social media, but the podcast meetup is still happening. It's going to be on that Thursday, the 26th, instead of the 27th, so we won't interfere with Disneyland After Dark. Now, what I'm hearing is that your Disneyland Star Wars After Dark, Disneyland After Dark tickets are still good, but if you want to use them on the 27th during celebration, it's going to cost an extra 60 bucks a person, which is, you know, challenging. It's challenging. It's not ideal at all, I don't think, but it is what it is. And, you know, 
if you want to go, I guess that's what you're going to do. But that is the news that we received today. And Matt and Anthony, uh, you guys should be on each other's podcast. You know, build that Star Wars community. That would be my uh, unofficial, unsolicited advice. Uh, Anthony is very excited for the meetup. I am too. I'm excited to meet you, Anthony. Uh, and so many of our our friends here at Coffee with Kenobi, this amazing Star Wars community that we have. You guys are so much fun. Speaking of fun, I'm sure you noticed, uh, just to spice things up, I haven't done this for a couple of years for whatever reason, but I instituted this week on our social media. We changed up the logo. Still the same show, Christmas with Kenobi now. I used to have some merch for that. We don't have any merch for that anymore, but it's kind of a fun way to celebrate the holiday season. As you all know, I absolutely love Christmas, so I love that Corey made this logo for me. He indulged my my Christmas my Christmas craziness. Mary reminds us we have to call by January 8th to update the tickets. And I was hearing today there was like a two-hour wait uh, to get on, so that was pretty wild. Uh, Blake, only park me and the wife plan on doing if we still make the trip is California Adventure. The only thing I don't have here in Florida. Oh, that's fair. California Adventure is nice. The Galaxy's Edge is fairly similar. There are a couple of key differences, but nothing that would you really notice or that you'd miss out on. So, yeah, that would be great. I hope you do make the trip because we would love to see you, my friend. Of course. All right. So let's do this. I'm going to show you. Uh, I'm going to change up this here. Let's see. Desktop feed. No. I'm going to show all of you um, something that may, that I got in the mail a couple hours ago. You may have seen me posting some things about it on social media. But here's an unboxing of the Boba Fett Black Series helmet that I got today. I'll pull this over, see if it works. Uh, there we go. So let me get rid of myself. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna start over. That deserves a little bit more of a full screen situation. So let me open up a new window here. Just a little bit of editing here on the fly. Let's duplicate the current scene. Here we go. Now I'm gonna go bye bye. So Mason and I uh, were very excited when we got this in the mail. I noticed last week, or a few weeks ago when I did an unboxing, I had my cam my microphone muted, but it's not. So Mason and I opened this thing up. It's a real, in fact, let me just start the video from the beginning. Boy, I'm, it's like amateur hour over here, isn't it? So there's a, the box itself. Beautiful, right? You should have seen the look on my face when I opened this thing up. I couldn't believe that they sent it. So Hasbro, thank you again for sending over this amazing free product i was very very surprised and it's perfect because of of course what's coming out in a couple weeks so mason and i are tearing this thing it's very well packaged of course and so he and i did a little bit of teamwork and then i had to cut this thing out to make sure that i did it properly and then how much do i want for the helmet the helmet uh, is not for sale mita it's a cool helmet there's the inside of it. It's quite comfortable, I think. Blake says it's a thing of art. It is a thing of art. It reminds us of the, the Poe Dameron one that that you uh, sent over. Slip on the side there. And then when you push the button on the side, there's Mason trying it on. You push the button on the side. Uh, it plops down. And there's Goofy Me putting it on. I'll show you how it works. Boom. Ta-da! And Mason kept saying, Dad, why are you doing that arm thing i don't know why it just it just felt like it felt like the right thing to do when you're wearing a boba fett helmet that's what you do right so here it is live it's super cool it's i mean it's really really nice it's very lightweight you push this little thing on the side here and it pops down nice and easy as you saw mason demonstrate for us there's the interior itself Again, it's quite comfortable. It's really, really nice. I really like it a lot. I will show you the box for it as well. And I will I will post that video uh, on social media. But there's the box itself. Boba Fett re-armored. Yeah. And then I have not put the battery jet in it yet, but when I do, I will be sure to show you what that sounds like 
Did I feel cooler wearing it? Yes. Oh my gosh, Brian, I sure did. That's why I had to do the the arm fold thing because it's just it's just awesome. And Mason loved wearing it too. He doesn't quite fit him yet because it's a little bit bigger. It's more of a it's for adults, really. But Mason, buddy, when you get older, it is yours, my friend. Of course. Terry says I really like mine. Just need the rocket launcher to complete it. Oh, nice. You do. That would be so sweet. All right. So that those are the main things really that are that are out. Of course, uh, the Halcyon people. Uh, it sounds like the first few months are sold out, and it continues to be very very popular. Even though we haven't had our maiden voyage yet, but it really is causing quite a stir. Uh, I hope that you will all join me, along with MEI and Mouse Fan Travel on the Galactic Star Cruiser in Walt Disney World, the summer of 2023. I mean, it seems like it's a long way away, but it's really it's really not as far away as you might think. So start saving your money so we can, you know, hang out on the Halcyon, which, you know, is going to be fantastic. All right, let's do a top five, shall we? Let's do our top five for tonight. Tonight's top five is top five moments from Star Wars Visions episode Lop and Ocho. Anthony says a Star Cruiser is going to be a light once in a lifetime experience. It is going to be fabulous. I'm thrilled about it. Just walking in the hallway is going to be worth it to me. So tonight, again, top five moments from Star Wars Visions episode. Uh, is it is it Lope? Lope and Ocho? I can't remember now. I think it's Lope and Ocho. Yeah. And then next week's our last one of Star Wars Visions, which is why we need to come up with some topics before Boba Fett shows up. Adam is here. Hello, Adam. Welcome to the show, my friend. Adam to Jane's, I believe that is how you pronounce your last name. Adam, thanks so much for joining us, my friend. We're about to give you our top five favorite moments from Lope and Ocho. I'm just going to say Lope. I think that's right. All right, number five for me is world building. I really liked that. I mean, they've all, all the episodes of Star Wars Vision have done really well in their own right. But this one, more than any of them, really felt for me. It really felt for me like it was a part of the, the canonical Star Wars universe. Now, it isn't. Let's not get carried away but it is not it just felt like something out of an episode of star wars rebels i mean in fact lethal very much reminded me of of this the planet from star wars rebels especially season one and four and i it just felt authentic star wars to me the the way that they crafted it it felt like i was still in the star wars universe i mean i guess i'm a broken record but I, but hopefully that makes sense number five for mary the very beginning of the episode felt so much like one of the movies yes exactly they just Felt authentic like that. Number five for me to the style of the episode. I had the feel of the 90s anime. And it seemed to closely resemble the traditional ways of the samurai. Yes, it did. Number five for Terry. Familiarity of darkness, depravity, and struggle in an empire-controlled world. Definitely. Mason has an idea. Top five Boba Fett lines. I like that. He doesn't say a lot in the movies, but maybe top five Boba Fett moments. Actually, Mason, that might be a good one to kick us off before the series. I like that. Mason is our junior executive producer, as you know. Brian's number five star destroyer splashdown. What a way to start the episode! I know just when that opens up like that with the star destroyer, Mason and I said, "Ooh," because it's just cool. Embracing haven't finished Bad Batch yet. Not seen any visions. Oh wow! Well, you're gonna like uh, Bad Batch for sure. And visions is fun. They're all they're short. I mean, some of them are twenty minutes, but you'll really enjoy them, man. I look forward to your thoughts on that. Blake's number five, the animation style, I believe the same studio who did the twins did this. And even though the style was different, it was beautiful in a different way, even if I'm wrong on that. You know what? I don't know the difference, buddy. I'm going to believe you on that one. Uh, Liberty says, Brian had mine, the Star Destroyer open. I'm surprised I didn't put that anywhere in mine. That That is a good one. That is a good one for sure. All right. Well, let's go ahead and jump into number four. I'm so glad to see everybody here, by the way. So nice to see everybody. Number four for me is the opening meeting. It's sort of the meet cute, right? How Lope and Ocho meet and how how they all become a family. I thought that was, was beautiful. Here, seeing their connections and seeing how they're going to fit together and how Lope is rescued from Imperial's tyranny. I like that, that that was powerful. Uh, oh, I forgot Mason's number five. I'm sorry. Mason's number five was when Father puts his fists on the ground and the ground becomes blue. And then we change 
the environment almost seems like you're in a different world. So that was Mason's number five. Sorry about that, Mason. Number four for Minta. With a little help, we are going to be a perfect family. Hearing this at the beginning and the end of the episode nearly broke me. It was sad, wasn't it? Yeah, that was sad. Number four for Terry. The father's passion to pass down generational teachings, regardless of what the empire has to offer. Very good. I like that. Number four for Liberty, the faithful droid in the story. I like that droid as well. That was a good catch. I I should have. I, what was the name of that droid? Does anybody remember? I feel like a lot of the droids in Star Wars Visions have similar names. Number four, the main character was a bunny, and we own a bunny named Bun Bun, which made my wife happy. Eddie, if anything that makes my lovely wife happy with Star Wars, a shout out. Yes, you should. You should, brother. Uh, Mary said, TD Droidy is always there for Lope, and she feels so deeply for him. She was heartbroken when Ocho strikes TD down during the end of the fight. I know, right? That was awful. Lope uh, was uh, a very cool character to relate to. Uh, created a lot of empathy. Mason loved this episode. He did love this episode. And Adam says he loved AP5 from Rebels. I liked AP5 as well. I mean... At some point, we're going to do a lot about Rebels because Rebels is, to me, about as good as it gets. Brian's over for the lightsaber hilt. I am a sucker for a good lightsaber hilt. The story of the family history and the passing of ownership to Lope. Yes, that is a good call. Brian, I have a feeling that will come up a little bit later in my list as well. Number four for Mason is the Jedi symbol. Seeing the Jedi symbol, we see it twice. First when they're in front of each other in the, the family stronghold facing each other, and the father is about to give a lot of secrets. We see the Jedi symbol in the background, and Mason says, Did you see that, Dad? He, he noticed it right away. And it was a cool moment. It was number four for him. I believe we've gotten to everybody who's been providing their list, so let's go ahead and jump into number three. Number three for me, Father's Wisdom. The father, I'm sure the father has a name. I didn't catch what it was. But I just, I'm so drawn to these wise older fatherly figures i love i love them and this father reminded me a lot of the father from uh luca they just they reminded me very much of one another for sure and i just when he talks he's certainly not calm but he's got he's also got a lot of reason to be very upset so i understand why he's not calm but i just really like his manner and his passion minta is number three Ocho's transformation. She went from happy child to rebellious daughter to recruit the Empire. Just insane. Yeah, that she was so frustrating to me. But very well done. Adam Visions is on Disney Plus. All nine episodes are on Disney Plus right now, my friend. Uh, Starwars.com has guides to them, but you can see them all on Disney Plus. Blake's number three, the presentation of the lightsaber was presented in a way that was deeply spiritual. And sacred, both in the Japanese culture and Star Wars ways, if that makes sense. It makes perfect sense. I caught that as well. Really like that. Mary Ocho cutting off her braids before joining the Empire. The symbolism of cutting off her connection to her family. Yes. And Mason and I talked about how in Japanese culture that's very symbolic. And we see that in the, the removal of the Jedi of the Padawan braid as well. Good catch, Mary. I, I Man, I, that was one I was going to put on there too. Terry's number three. Again, the soundtrack from the music where the Imperial officer speaks to Lope and Ocho. is a climactic fight. The importance of music in a Star Wars story cannot be underscored. Ah, he says, see what I did there? Yes, I did, Terry. Well done. Liberties. Next one, Ocho's transition from light to dark. The way she cut her hair emotional. Agree with Minta. Yes, it's a, it's a great one. Very powerful. Number three for Brian, the introduction of Lope to Ocho and the father. He's so compassionate and immediately takes her into the family right away, right away. It just makes the fall from grace that much more painful, I think. Sorry, I'm getting distracted by my Christmas lights. Woo, I love seeing these things in here. I might keep them up the whole year. Why not? Why not? Uh, okay, uh, Mason's number three. Uh, when it shows the generations of the family, like the passing of the baton, I really like the idea of passing your lightsaber from like there's just one and you pass it from generation to generation. Mason liked that so much he put it for his number three. Uh, does Terry score a bonus point for that comment? I think he does. I definitely think that he does. For sure. All right, number two. 
number two. Number two for me is a Jedi legacy I love. I just talked about the passing of the torch, which is one lightsaber, not a bunch of lightsabers, not a bunch of Jedi, but one family member has a lightsaber and passes it down to the child. And I love that. It's just very, it's so mythological in its construction and the concept. And yet again, another way to reinvent the idea of the legacy of the lightsaber, the Jedi and the force, but through that family lineage, absolutely beautiful. Excuse me. I love it. Excuse me. Number two for me to the father passing the lights were down to Lope. He saw how deeply she cared for the family and he knew that she was worthy of using the blade. Exactly. That's what I was trying to say until you said it better than I did. Terry's number two inheritance has nothing to do with blood. This, uh, many other sayings, there are many other sayings similar to parallel Jedi teachings. And I like that so much. Really like that. Uh, let's see. Uh, Adam, did Anakin make the hero's saber? Adam, I'm not sure what exactly what you what you're asking per se. Do you mean in Galaxy's Edge or uh, it's on Star Wars Visions, or is there something else? Feel free to clarify, and we'll look at it a little bit later in the show. Uh, Mary, uh, the traditional Japanese music, especially during the sword, the saber sword ceremony. The entire ceremony was wonderful from the music to the animation of the script. So good. It was so good. And number two for Brian is just Lop. Lop in general as a character. Blake's number two, seeing how the Empire's presence can be viewed as good from a certain point of view. Even though this isn't canon, the concept with normal people in the galaxy is something explored in comics and whatnot. I find fascinating. I agree. It, again, it reminds me so much of Star Wars Rebels. Ryan's the second one. Lopes use of the force to pull another weapon to use against her sister. That's right. That is a good one. That's definitely going to come up a little bit later. I know for sure. Mason's number two is when the lightsaber is first revealed out of that little box and just seeing the hilt itself. All right, let's go into number one. My top thing here. My top uh, moment from Star Wars Visions Lope and Ocho for me is the same one as Mason's number two. My number one, the lightsaber reveal. When we suddenly see that lightsaber, it looks like one from Galaxy's Edge, 100%. It looks like, it doesn't look like a, a manga version of a lightsaber. I don't mean that as pejorative, it just doesn't. It just looks like one I could buy a Doc Ondar's. Maybe someday we will get to, I have no idea. But I love it. I mean, I, again, like one of you said, I think, Brian, you mentioned that. It was either Brian or Terry. I think it was Brian. How much you love lightsabers and the hilts. I'm such a sucker for them too. Absolutely fabulous. So good. So cool. Uh, Minta's number one, Lope. She had so much heart and passion for her adoptive family. She went to great lengths to bring her sister back home. Yes, she did. Adam, the blue blade Obi-Wan gives to Luke. Then, um, oh, is that the hero lightsaber? Oh, yeah, I think so. I think so, for sure. Uh, thanks, Adam, for clarifying. Terry's number one. It didn't take an evil conscience to support the Empire. Ocho passionately believed she was supporting the correct side, but it consumed her in the end. You could really see it taking over her over. It was really, really rough. Liberty, blood family versus adopted family. Recurring theme from Star Wars. Love that Lope was adopted into their family. That was pretty beautiful. Mary's number one. The duel between Ocho and Lope. The visuals, the animation, the choreography, the fight. And when Ocho comes back to view in the top of the ship, very well done. Yeah, that was cool how she jumped down and kind of rose up there. I thought that was neat. Number one, from Brian, the father's comment, that's what family does for each other in difficult times. Shows family is more than just blood. Again, the found family angle, so good. Uh, Blake's number one, the fact that this episode was left on a cliffhanger. There was no redemption for the one sister that hopefully leads to more story. Even though I'm not a Last Jedi fan. It reminds me of how it ended with an unhinged Kylo, Kylo and leave me with what I, what happens next way of thinking when that ended. Good. I didn't know you weren't a Last Jedi fan. We're going to have to talk about that. Uh, Adam says, out of loop, no idea who these characters are. No worries, Adam. Uh, catch up on Visions and then feel free to come back and join, and join the show later. You can catch it here on our Facebook page or on YouTube or Instagram. Oh, and then, of course, 
future lives, which I'm super glad that you and everybody else is joining us tonight. So good stuff. Uh, Mason's number one is when Lope uses a force to pull the sword over. So she has a lightsaber in one hand and a sword in another. That is Mason's number one. Very, very cool. All right. Well, next week, of course, we're going to finish off our deep dive look at Star Wars Visions. We're going to look at Akakiri. Akakiri is uh, definitely the darkest episode of all of them, I think. Uh, it'll be interesting to see. It's a little bit shorter, but it is pretty cool. And Blake says, Adam, you're going to love Visions. And I agree. I do think you will love Visions, Adam. And I look forward to your thoughts on that. All right, let's go ahead and jump into Ask Dan Z. All right, so hopefully uh, by now, I mean, says the last episode was super dark. It is super, super dark. All right, so I asked you uh, at the beginning, if you have any questions about the Star Wars character encyclopedia, it came out. Uh, tomorrow will be a week since the, my new book dropped and the feedback has been great. Again, seeing everybody's pictures of getting the book was awesome. I've signed a few so far and there will be hopefully opportunities for future signings, both in this area and, uh, around the, around the globe as, as we'll, I will share when we get a chance to do so. Mary, uh, once I had a note, the vision shows are on Disney plus for about 15, 20 minutes long each. There are nine episodes and they are fun. Put your favorite loose figure down and tell us how you got it and what you think of the character. Hmm. Well, favorite loose one. That's gosh, that's what are you trying to do to me? I'll just grab the one that's the closest to me. How about that? So this is the Vader. This is the classic Kenner Vader. You notice it's in great shape, right? Well, that's because it's the retro version, but I bought one that was, in the bot in the package still and then i open one up because i want to be able to extend that lightsaber i love that classic telescoping lightsaber still got the the plastic tip on the end there just a great looking figure love them love them love them love them i actually don't remember getting my original darth vader although i do have my original darth vader he's just way much higher up in the studio i can't reach him from here but having this one down makes it easier for me to be able to kind of play with it. Uh, let's see. Minta, do you think you might make a book of the Star Wars Visions characters? Look, if Disney asks me to write any more Star Wars books, I will say yes. It doesn't matter the topic. I will be happy to do it. Can we see the shirt? Yeah, the shirt is cool, man. I got this from Old Navy a couple years ago. It's a Christmas shirt. There you go. Tis the season. R2 and 3PO and Christmas lights and Santa hats doesn't really get much better than that, does it? Not at all. Who is my favorite character to write for in the encyclopedia? My favorite character to write for, I don't remember if I talked about this on Coffee with Kenobi last week. Speaking of that, before I get to your question, Anthony, last week on Coffee with Kenobi, it was the first interview that Amy and I did. Amy Raquel, my co-author on the updated and expanded edition, it was the first interview we did about the book, and that was a blast. And I'm pretty sure, well, I don't know if I mentioned on there or not, but I'm happy to share it again. I liked writing about Boba Fett, and I liked writing about Ahsoka Tano because it's it's cool to be able to write about two of my favorite characters. Or Boba Fett isn't necessarily one of my favorites, although the world seems to be trying to push me towards that direction with the merchandise and the book of Boba Fett coming out and how cool Timura Morrison is. But it just, I know how important that character is. So I really want to do it justice and I think it worked out well. I, I'd love to see what you think. Blake says I have the Vader dude is one of my favorites. Yeah, it's so, so cool. No spoilers, but do you happen to have any more book writing opportunities in the making? Well, you know, Terry, the wheels are always in motion. My friend, um, typically when these things happen, uh, they were pretty top secret, so I would say anything is possible in the Force, my friend. I, I'm always open to be able to do anything like that. Uh, Joseph, you're welcome. Glad you like the shirt. Mason says Baby Yoda is his favorite. I do have the, the replica Baby Yoda Grogu, uh, one that is the Kenner Retro one. I have that one, but I can't reach him from here. 
either, but there's a lot of cool ones. I need to get on TikTok. I'm having fun with that. So maybe I'll just do a lot of video of the collection. I've got plenty to keep you all entertained. That's for sure. Uh, let's see. Oh, we're going to talk about future topics. In fact, I'm going to change the screen a little bit here just to the main feed. Uh, Anthony says, how's the process of deciding who got to write which characters? It was great because I got to write the Mandalorian and Amy wrote the rise of Skywalker. So we just had our characters and we just went with it, man. It was, it was really fun. Uh, have I been to galaxy's edge yet? Uh, I have been to galaxy's edge. I've been to galaxy's edge several times. I was fortunate enough to go to the grand premiere of it in California. And I've been there a couple times, been the one in Florida a couple times. It's magical. So if you're going to Celebration, Adam, I highly recommend it, my friend. It is, it's great. I mean, there's really nothing like Galaxy's Edge. I think Galaxy's Edge is about as good as it gets. Mason and I love it. My wife loves it. <laughs> In fact, if you hear our stories about the last spring break when we went there, she has a so a funny take on on it. I think that's pretty entertaining. Who signed that basketball you always see in the opening? Yeah. That basketball, I graduated from Illinois State University. And a couple of years ago, they honored me for being a, a distinguished alum or for how I use Star Wars and education together because I, the Illinois State Education Program honored me at halftime of the men's basketball game. So that is signed by the, the head coach of Illinois State University's men's basketball team. Really, a really nice collectible. All right, so tell me, so we're going to talk probably about top five Boba Fett moments, both from the movies, comics, novels, and then, of course, from The Mandalorian Season 2. So we'll probably do that. Are there any other topics that you think would be fun? We're going to go over each episode of The Book of Boba Fett naturally. But if you can think of other ones, this would be the time to share. What is my favorite Lego from the Star Wars Advent Encounter so far? Good question. Uh, I don't know if you can tell, but I got a couple of them right there. Um, the troop transport is kind of fun. I like the Razor Crest. It was an improvement on the Razor Crest mini build from last year. I think that's pretty fun. Uh, what about you, Brian? Uh, and Anthony says top five moments from the Under the Hood documentary. Now that I have thought about that. I love that documentary. It's great. Uh, with some of our good friends in that one, and just seeing the history of the character and the merchandise is fabulous. So that's a good one, Anthony. I like that. Blake says, my hype level for FET and our discussion is through the roof. I know, it's going to be so cool. Uh, Adam, I don't know, man. We don't. I don't do the spoiler thing, my friend, but if that does happen, I would be very, very happy to see that. Mason says, top five Stormtrooper lines. Okay. Brian's favorite is the E-Web. Yeah, the E-Web is cool. Uh, lines definitely got that mace for sure. Uh, the E-Web is cool because it's like a, a snowball launching E-Web. So... That is pretty cool. Really, really cool. I'm very excited about it. I'm excited to talk about it with all of you, certainly here on CWK Live, as well as on Coffee with Kenobi. Well, thank you, everybody. Next week, we are going to look at the end of Star Wars Vision. So, Adam, you've got a week, my friend, to catch up and join us and come up with your top five. We'd love to see what you, what you come up with. We'd love to see all of you. And remember, next week... When you're showing up, ooh, top five Black Series helmets so far. Well, that's a good one, too. I like that, Terry. Next week, we're going to uh, have Star Wars trivia. Uh, Anthony says, top five most from the Faithful Wookiee special. <laughs> Maybe. Me and May the Force be with you. Top five CWK podcast of the year for you, Dan. Uh, love you all. Thanks, Blake. We appreciate you all so much. Love having all of you on this show. Top five CWK podcast here. That would be fun. Mary says, have a wonderful week, definitely. Uh, Liberty, it was great to have you on the show. You're welcome back anytime. Uh, next week, please bring a friend. Love to continue to build this community, and CWK Live is a great way to do that. You get to actually share your voices on the air in real time with me, which is pretty special. Thank you, Brian. Great way to start the week because of all of you. Mason, I will see you soon, buddy. Mason helped me some of the graphics tonight, which was cool. Fun to teach him all that stuff. Uh, so again, next week we're going to do Star Wars Trivia, but it's going to be different. We're actually going to have real prizes courtesy of one of our our dear 
community members who has chosen to remain anonymous, but we have some prizes to offer next week for Star Wars trivia. So be sure to join us next week, 7 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time for CWK Live, and you might win a very special prize as well. Until next time, my friends, be well, be safe, and remember this is the podcast you're looking for. I will see you next time. This podcast is not endorsed by the Walt Disney Company or Lucasfilm Limited. It is intended for entertainment and informational purposes only. The official Star Wars website can be found at www.starwars.com. Star Wars, all names, sounds, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Disney and their respective trademark and copyright holders. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of Coffee with Kenobi unless otherwise indicated. This is the podcast you're looking for.